Today I have my lovely bride, Zelda, with me, and she has no idea what we're gonna be talking about. It was really important to me to have a candid conversation about really anything that I do with her on video so that you know it's not scripted, so that you know she's not feeding back lines that I've told her to talk about because I really wanna get a feminine perspective because I think it's important for men to hear what something is like for women. So, Zelda. The reason I wanted to talk with you today is because a man told me that his that he's learning he needs to be curious and he says I, I don't know what what that means I don't know how to be curious has you been watching Ted Lasso <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's actually why I love that clip she's talking about the barbecue sauce clip in Ted Lasso and that's actually a really good clip that if you're in the mentoring men community, you've probably seen me post exactly for this reason. I want to know from your perspective, and you're free to tell my dirty stories from the past, about how it feels when you relate to a man and he doesn't feel curious. And when I say curious, by the way, I mean curious about your perspective, uh, curious about what you're talking about. How does it feel in general when you feel like somebody's not curious? Well, it feels like they don't care about you. It feels like they're only concerned about um, themselves and okay. excited to talk about themselves and what they are interested in. Okay. But if they're not willing to ask any questions um, about you, yeah, it makes you feel like, well, do you really care about me that much? So they're not appreciated or valued? Yeah. Okay. So, I could use an example. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you know how people will ask each other, like, how's work going? You yeah. Know, you get together for the holidays, how's work going? Well, I have homeschooled for these many years, and whenever we would get together for holidays, I would notice that no one ever asked me about how homeschooling was going. Mm. And, um, friends other than people who other people at home school don't really ask about it um in the beginning of you know life together when i would do our portfolios and i would want you to look at it and you would say i don't need to look at it mm. because i know what my kids are doing you know yeah. already i would feel <clears throat> like boy no one really cares what i'm doing <laughs> with my days you know what i mean and it's even now it stands out to me and now it stands out to me when someone asks me so the last time i was at my hairdresser dressing appointment which my hairdresser happens to be a man <laughs> he said how's homeschooling going and i said wow you're the first person to ask me that in a really long time <laughs> like i can't think of the last time someone asked me that other than another person who homeschools so in that respect, when people are like that, it makes me feel like, do they really want to know me? Sounds so it just makes me feel like nobody really cares about what I'm doing with my life. And I would say that for a romantic point of view. Like if, if there were seasons of life where you didn't care about what I was passionate about, which might have been totally idiotic things. There was a season where I was passionate about the Rosie O'Donnell show. <laughs> and I, I remember that scene. <laughs> in my 20s so. uh you didn't you didn't care a bit <laughs> I didn't Which care for Rosie I I can get now but yeah if you're not curious I think that's why I like the Ted Lasso like I brought that up it's just a joke but when I saw that scene you know I thought like yeah curiosity you know what I mean like whenever we have people over I'm curious about them like what what life looks like for them. I feel like, I mean, maybe people don't get that from me, but I feel like I am. It sounds like what you're describing to me is you didn't feel very seen. Yes. And, and is that important to a woman to be seen? Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because <laughs> just think about like a little girl coming down with like her pretty party dress on and she's like, look at me. Yeah, just, I don't have to think about that. I see it all like, the time. Like, twirling around, she wants to be seen. Or the amount of times that we've been asked by children, like, can I do a show for you? Yeah. And I, I think 
you know, boys are like that too, but I don't know, there's something, I can only speak from a girl's point of view, but I feel like there's something more in the heart of a, a girl and then it goes uh, with you into womanhood that you're like, yeah, you want... Well, I think both want to be seen, but I think women want to be seen and celebrated as beautiful and praiseworthy. And particularly that shows up as wanting to receive praise. And boys, I think actually when boys are boys and not yet men, they share a lot of commonality with the feminine. But they want to be praised more for strength, virtue, and like heroism. Yeah, like so, pick up a stick. Look how strong I am. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> yeah, seems definitely. to be. They wanted to feel like you want to be seen as the hero when you're a little boy, and a, and a woman wants to be seen as the treasure and the prize. I think. Yeah. How about in an argument? This is really the context I was primarily thinking about because this is something I recognize in my own history with you. That when you would come to me with something that you were feeling. And you, you might have you might have a grievance with me about some something in life, right? Mm-hmm. Something we experience together, and you're telling me what you think. We we both know my capacity for lawyering. <laughs> so I want you to tell these folks how did that make you feel and how do you see that relating to curiosity? Um, it made me feel like I, one, I could never win, but two, I could never really have a different opinion um, unless it was, I mean, unless I could have something like so well thought out, like a, like a bulletproof kind of case, then it would feel hopeless. I would get to a point where it's like, okay, hands up, like I'm going to, I'm going to walk away because. The only, the only other thing I can do next would be like to like explode with like nastiness and whatnot. If I got to a point like that where I would come at you with something and you could just overpower with your Lorian skills, then I'm just going to stop because I'm not going to go to that that anger level, which isn't necessarily a good thing. You just kept <laughs> it all inside. I just kept Right now, I recognize what was happening in that time is, and I think a lot of men watching this will struggle with this. When we hear your perspective, and it's not it's not what you're doing. Although men always think of this as their wives doing this to them, it feels like an attack. But what we're really experiencing is our own defensiveness, because we're we feel threatened that you have a different perspective of the same experience than I did. When you would come to me about something, it's what I what I would do all the time, and men do this, and I want you to think about it if you're doing this, if you're watching, is when you would share your experience of something, I would immediately in my head go to what my experience of the same thing was, and I would that's what would make me lawyer. I would say, no, you've got it all wrong. So it was almost like I was saying, you have to have my perspective of this. Yes. Well, if I'm in my story and you came to me to share your story, and I insist on mine, can I be curious? Not at all. <laughs> no curiosity happened in there, no. Okay, so where, so what would make for a lack of curiosity? If somebody said, I don't know how to be curious, I struggle with curiosity, where do you think, what do you think the first thing to do would be? I think pause. Oh, that's a good Like, one. pause. You know, even if a woman's coming at you like, ha! Ah! I think, like, pause and think, you know, what what could be going on? Because there's that's curiosity, right yeah, there. yeah, that's curiosity. Yeah, pause is the is the first step, I think, and then yeah, and ask questions. Because oftentimes, I think if I came at you with some things, it was probably, you know, there are other things going on that maybe what I'm saying isn't really the real thing. It's like she said it. I didn't script this. <laughs> I say all the time to guys that your words are not always really precise in the technical meaning as yeah. women. That you're trying to convey an emotion and you just you just rapidly rapid fire words. But as men, like word words, especially in careers that we have, are we're like really really precise with sometimes the words we choose. And so I know for most of my marriage with you, 
I have really drilled into the accuracy of the words and they they I was already being defensive which didn't help yeah but then I would be all hung up on the words because I would I'd be like internally fact checking these words saying that's not true and then I would feel that all that defensiveness and insecurity and then I would get all caught up in my story People don't necessarily believe it when men say, oh, don't worry about the woman's words. Try to hear her emotion. <laughs> yeah, and what's behind it, what has caused it. And um, I know that if if once I would have, have those poems, like, ah, and I maybe would want to, like, backpedal and come to you differently, you weren't always receptive to that either. <laughs> Like, you've already made, done this, so now you can't, you know, you can't make it right. Whereas with our children, if I was like, ah, but then I had a moment or two or three or, you know, hours <laughs> to, like, decompress, and I came back to them and said, that was, you know, wrong of me, I, this was what was going on that made me do this or say this, they would easily forgive. <laughs> okay, wait a, minute, wait a minute. So what you're saying is, if I'm hearing you correctly, if I didn't respond to your blah that you said, and I just chilled out and let you be, that you on your own would go off, you'd internally process it, you'd sort of course correct, mm -hmm. and you'd come back. So you don't need me to correct your record is what you're yeah. saying. So setting yeah. the record straight isn't really something I need to give any time and attention to. And I actually know yeah. this because you, you have done this yeah. always, as long as I've been open to you coming to do that, which has not always been the case. Yeah, but I think when a person is met with um, either like nothing, you know, like that pause, or humor, you know, you're really good at that. Now I feel like humor and warmth really um, diffuse. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That someone who, you know, who really is, you know, of the right heart or mind, but in that moment, you know, you're not, you're going to, you're going to come back, you know, eventually and say, you know, I'm sorry, this is what was going on. But when a person is just like, so if I forget it, then there's nothing you can do. <laughs> if I was calm and humorous and warm and curious because I think they all they're all stuff I can be mm -hmm. if I'm not caught up in my need to defend myself or to well, course correct me or course correct <laughs> but yeah if I don't yeah. feel like well and that's all based on defensiveness the yeah. only reason I ever felt like I needed to change your story was because I wouldn't have been able to articulate at the time but I had a fear that if our stories don't match I'll probably come to some sort of negative consequence like mm -hmm. you'd stop loving me, you'd stop, you'd go away, you know, just a, a whole bunch of things. And I think we learned that early on. We learned that if we don't agree, there might be peril. Yeah. Now, I mean, as a person who was bullied as a kid, I think some of that anxiety comes came from that experience. Like I learned really early on, if you're out of alignment with somebody else, it's an occasion for conflict because that usually meant getting in some sort of fisticuffs. You know. Mm -hmm. Well. You're, so you're saying though, if I'm like that, do, do you do you feel like that gives you more of an openness to go off and do that kind of recalibrating mm -hmm. than if I was a jerk and I yes just kind of like vomited back yes how does it definitely how does it make you feel if I don't do those things if I'm not warm or humorous okay. or or curious but I'm just defensive yeah uncared for. <laughs> and like like we're an enemy we're enemies huh. instead of on the same team right because you're trying helpless. to tell me your and how helpless. your how your insides feel mm -hmm. and i'm basically trying to talk you out of it right <laughs> yes yes and so. oftentimes i know this so many times over the years i probably was just wanting to just like like and just have you hear and listen, but not do anything about it. Mm. Like, because sometimes, I mean, a lot of times there's nothing you can do about it. So you're just looking to, to basically like have a, a human sounding board or yeah. basically sit and receive your 
your emotion almost almost like a backstop. Yes. And so you're not looking for me to fix anything. You're just looking for me to pretty much be there. <laughs> Sometimes I am, let's face it. You're the fix okay. <laughs> How would I or a man be able to tell if you want us to fix something versus just be a backstop? I think after the pause, then ask the question, which just comes back to curiosity, and, and just say, is this something you just want me to hear, or do you want my feedback? Mm. Or do you want me to do something about this? Right? Just ask those questions. And maybe in the moment, the wife, I'm going to say woman, whoever it is we're dealing with here, um, doesn't know. And then you would just be able to give her grace at that moment to say, okay, well, we'll just okay. leave it at that for now. <laughs> you know? And when you figured it out, let's resume, or I don't know, just, don't you just think that's a better way to be? I do, I, but I also recognize when we're little boys, because it's the same, like, pick up a stick, look how strong I am. Yeah, I think it's in the in a boy's heart, and you have to grow, you have to figure out how to grow into this as a man, that when a female is in trouble, you see that as an opportunity to, like, to show her your value by like, look how fast I can fix your problem, you know? Yeah. Um, Which, I mean, I saw that. We have two sons, th- a bonus son now, but so three, for yeah. the first number of years, just two. And I found them both to be very tender towards me, but one especially, if I had the wrong look on my face, he would be like, what's wrong? One day I was in I was in front of a mirror just washing my hands and I looked up and I saw that I was scowling. Like I had a scowl, like I could, you know, like scowl. And I and I looked at myself and I'm like, maybe this is what I look like when he's always asking me what's wrong. <laughs> but there's nothing in my head to make me have that scowl. And it made me think like this is what people are seeing and they're then thinking something's wrong, but nothing's wrong. I don't know why I'm making this face. My point being is that, yeah, even as a young boy, I can see in him, he wanted to fix things. And if mm. he saw something out of order, like he wanted to make it right. <laughs> but most men can relate to that. And we're, yeah. I think we have a, there's good naturedness there that wants to come to your aid as a spouse and the feminine and wants to be strong and wants to help. Yeah. And we don't, we don't know. But part of that too is when you talk about that ah, for a man, because it's, not very common Mm -hmm. that looks like and i hate to i I don't mean to be offensive but it seems like dysfunction yeah and it's it's not that we actually believe that in the long term i've come to understand that it's just like the ocean has turmoil sometimes and there's the ocean is at ease with the turmoil but if i'm standing there i'm not going to be at ease i'm going to be scared by the ocean being angry Mm -hmm. right and we can look at the feminine the same way sometimes. And so when a woman is coming at you with like, blah, you feel like, what is that about? And if you are a person that's deal- that has not dealt with shame and insecurity and fear and anxiety in your life, then you connect the dots. She's like that because there's a problem with me. And we just want to make it stop. Right? <laughs> It's just like, it's like you're on the, the edge of the ocean and the waves are crashing up and you're like, I'm about to get my rear end kicked here by the, the ocean. Yeah. That's how it feels for men. That's where most men will, will be. So we're not quite sure what to do with that. I was just going to say there's a good scene, I feel like, based on what you're talking about, the ocean, um, of a, that like paints a picture of that from the movie Parenthood. That was with Steve Martin and yeah. Mary Steenburgen, where Steve Martin's character is very like wants everything to be, you know, a certain way, and is wanting to fix things. And when things go wrong, he's very in turmoil by it. And there's a scene where they're talking about, uh, I think life life is like a roller coaster. And there was really interesting camera work where you can see like he's looking at his wife and she's actually like on a roller coaster but she's laughing because she sees that you know life does have that kind of ah moments of yeah. the ups and downs and twists for her. and turns and and she's okay with it and he's like having to ride that and 
and then in that moment see where she's coming from. Yeah, and I think, I've, and actually as a man, the more I've come to understand that that's how women are, I'm not, I'm not bothered by it, and I actually think it's fun. Which, I don't mean to have fun at your expense, I just mean like I'm not bothered by you or the girls kind of having their angry ocean moment because I realize it's actually is actually fun and it's a good feeling for a man to be able to just be like okay what do you need and be calm about it but I had to learn that you know what I mean and we don't it's not like we have teachers and instructors not not guys my age you know, nobody taught us this stuff they just were like oh that she's bad shit crazy you know and that's and that's what you're programming that's all you hear is like you got to find a woman who's basically more masculine. Well, yeah, it's funny you say that because I can't tell you how many times that someone has told me about someone, either it's them from a first-person perspective or they're t- talking about their brother and his ex, his soon-to-be ex-wife. And Anyway, just how crazy the woman is, right? Like, she's completely crazy. And I think, well, was she so crazy when you got together with her and now suddenly she's crazy? Or is she just being a woman? <laughs> like, <laughs> I have a whole video about that. Yeah. You want a woman. And if I wanted a woman, I wouldn't have you. We're like we we need each other. Like I need you to be more solid and not so like flighty and like uh So you need me you need me to be different than you is what you're saying. Yeah. Or what we call polarity. Yeah. Where the curiosity comes into play is like just that loving care, you know, rather right. than some weird version of masculinity where you're just gonna pound on the problem. You want to you want to be solid. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. No, and, like, and I. Like <laughs> I like to be curious. I think actually my default state, if I'm not anxious, insecure, fearful, afraid, is curiosity. I mean, I could be curious in every other way, and really, so when a man asks me why can't I be curious, it's a matter of well, you're preoccupied. Your 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 you might call it your ego, your inner child. Your little boy. Everybody has all kinds of different terms for this. I like. I think the ego is the thing. The e, the ego is afraid. Hey, I, I can't listen to her right now, because, I'm in trouble. So what I would tell a man is, you can't be curious if you're if you're playing defense, because in order to be curious, you have to have the bandwidth in your heart and your, and in your mind to be, curious. <laughs> Like, but you can't do that if it's if it's like, hey, I'm fighting a war right now, yeah. especially as a man because we're single focused. So if my single focus is on defending myself from attack, the last thing I'm thinking about is curiosity. Right. So to be curious, then I think men have to they have to be able to attack the the reason they're defensive, which is of course the work I do. But right, anyway. and. Two thoughts I had as you were talking. One was like the opposite of the of the ego. I feel like if we're going to use that word, where we say like the ego is getting in the way, is humility. And I think to be curious takes a measure of humility. You know, to get out of that headspace and then look at the person and yeah. ask questions. And then the other thing I was going to say was then it's a two way street of curiosity. You know, like if I see that you're doing something, I, I should be curious enough to say, you know, is now a good time? Can you listen yeah, to me now? Yeah, really good about that. Um, that sort of thing. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like humility and curiosity, I feel like, go hand in hand, and they're definitely... But you, you didn't start doing that, I think, until you had a little bit of insight that, like, oh, yeah, men are not like women, that, like, we're, like, really dialed in on one thing. Yeah. You started to be more conscientious about like, can you focus on this right now? And I try to be more yeah. conscientious with telling people <clears throat> with my words. I I'm not really focused on what you're saying right now. I'm a little distracted, and I do that with friends too, and it's actually really helpful. Just tell them, and I, I do this with the girls all the time. Like, I'm not paying attention as much as I really want to. So can we do this in a minute? Mm-hmm. And that, that goes a long way. So, all right, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. Great. And I'm sure people will want more. <laughs> so um, thank you for watching this. If you have specific questions that we didn't cover about curiosity, 
um, about communicating, about defensiveness. Please. Humility. Humility. <laughs> um, so humble. You can email me at sven at svenmasterson.com or you can click the link below in the description where you can set up a free session where you can talk to me for 90 minutes and we'll talk not about trying to sell you anything or um, get you to buy anything. Nothing like that. We'll talk about what's going on in your life and share this kind of information with you, how you can improve. And if you like this video, I would love it if you'd give us a thumbs up. Is this going to be on YouTube? Ring the bell. Subscribe. Ring the bell. It's going to be I've on YouTube. To <laughs> a comment would even be extra bonus material. And if you have something you want us to talk about uh, together like this, because every time I've done a video with Zelda, which is all, was once, <laughs> um, yeah, got, everybody was like, more Zelda, please. So, um, uh, not that we can make a huge practice out of this, because you do have homeschooling to do, <laughs> which I'm really curious about. And um, yeah, we'll try to make some videos. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next time. Take care.